Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about the blob, the blob brush for sculpting. So let's go ahead and do new file in general inside of Blender. And let's go ahead and save it because we are professional designers. We'll just call it blob. And go ahead and set it up for sculpting. Take this time to test your knowledge. Do, do. And if you don't remember, all you have to do, click on the object you want to sculpt. You know, take it in a matte cap if you want. This is optional. You don't have to. And then add your modifier. Give it some multi-resolution because we need resolution if we're going to be doing some sculpting, y'all. So just go ahead and subdivide if you want to make it smooth. Or you can do simple or linear if you want to keep it all jaggedy. So we're going to subdivide it maybe four or five times. I might even go to six today because I'm feeling, I'm feeling crazy. All right. So I got six. My computer almost crashed. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And let's do our statistics. So go to your viewport overlays drop down here and add statistics. Yours may be down here at the bottom, but since I'm using the newest and truest Blender 2.91 Alpha, it is now up here in the top left. So we have 2 million faces. This is great. So let's go ahead and switch into sculpt mode, or you can do control tab down and flip flop into your sculpt mode. Now let's activate the brush of the day, which is the blob. And this is similar to the inflate. So inflate is kind of like, uh, you know, inflating things or wanting to, uh, you know, Botox things um, in the direction of the normals. The blob pushes meshes inward or outward in a spherical fashion. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, and it's actually depending on the the size of your brush. So if I just sit here and just click on one of her eyes and just start clicking and clicking and clicking, notice it's just adding a blob into the eyeball here. And I went a little too crazy and a little too far. So I'm just going to undo that and just make a little, little eyeball indention there. Um, and you can also do the opposite. So you can increase your strength or flip flop it with a minus. But what I want you to get in the habit of is just holding control to do the opposite. So go to the other eye and hold control and just push that eyeball in. And there you go. So now you've got two different types of pupils that we made from the same different tool. And when I use, when I do sculpting, I really like to do kind of like this Roman statue type of style of pupil where you're actually pushing the pupil in and that way you get that nice shadow and from a distance or, you know, once it's printed, it actually looks like a pupil, you know, see if we jump back here, the one on the right here looks kind of like an areola and the one over here actually looks like an eyeball. So that's different things you can do with the blob or let's just say we want to add big blobs or zits all over Suzanne, you know, just go ahead and just double click on those a few times. Or maybe she got like knocked in the head, you know, like the old Looney Tune cartoons or where she's got like a bump on the head. You know, you could do that with the, uh, the blob tool and just make blobs. I've used the blob tool just to make like perfect little circles for a lot of my designs. Or if you want to do kind of like polka dots, you could also use it for craters. So if you hold control, you know, you can go super deep into the design and make little crater holes. You can even go inside of the cr inside of the crater holes and make no crater holes, you know? So really just depends on what you're trying to do, but it's mainly just, you know, keeping things very spherical and blobby. So, you know, just go ahead, have fun. And what I want you to do is just make a bunch of blobs all over Suzanne, different heights, different strengths, you know, play with your different strengths. Boom. Look at that. That one really is popping. Maybe if you turn it down really, really soft or use your pen tablet here, make sure if you are using a pen tablet, you have this little blue guy, this little icon here turned on so that it will sense your pressure. And so notice it's very, very soft here. So you got to click it many a times, but it's actually not as intense. So notice when we had it up really high, we just clicked a few times and it's very spiky. But when we turned it down, it's very, you know, low and more round. So depending on what kind of blobs you're trying to do, you can adjust your settings accordingly. So that is the blob. Go ahead and play with that. It's super fun. I use this one a lot. I really, really enjoy making little 
spherical blobs, or if you just need to build up, you know, a certain point, a certain part. I'm going to go to point 0.5, just halfway there, and just maybe shrink in my blob here. You know, you can make little little detail accents, you know, like kind of like a tribal uh, thing right there. So now we've got little dots. So you get the idea. You know, you can get pretty creative. Say if we wanted to make nostrils, you could use the blob for nostrils. You could hold control. You know, just go in. Actually, I'm going to undo. And for this one, I'm going to toggle on the X because I want it to be on both nostrils. Uh, but, you know, just control, push that for nostrils and just kind of sculpting out some nostrils here. And maybe I want to bring it in a little bit. And there we go. We've got some nostrils just like that. So, you know, have some fun. Play around with the blob. Don't go too extreme where you, you know, push the the geometry too far. Um, you know, you can always subdivide more if you need. But, uh, you know, go ahead. But, you know, have some fun. This is a good one. And let's go ahead and jump into the crease brush whenever you're ready. You're the next lesson. Yeehaw!